Hi, uh, my name is Janina and I am a product designer based in Krakow. And for the past three years, uh, I have been working at CodeWise on a SaaS application called Volume Tracker. And today I want to tell you a little bit about my experience of designing a mature product. And to give you a context of uh, what I'm going to talk about, I want to uh, tell you about Volume. And Volume Tracker is an analytical SaaS solution uh, that allows for tracking, optimizing, and automating advertising campaigns. Uh, currently, the, it's the most popular um, uh, tracker on the market dedicated to affiliate marketing. And uh, Volume is also uh, um, a product with rich history. Uh, it, the, its development has been started in 2013. So uh, a lot of people have been working on the product since then. And through these eight years, different approaches have been taken to develop it further to our users' expectations. And also through that time, uh, we have accumulated quite a lot of debt, debt both um, technical and related to design. Mm. I don't want to go into too much details on what affiliate marketing is, but for the purpose of this presentation, I think it's really uh, important to understand that volume is and has always been a, a tool centered around data. And um, it is very crucial for users to be able to get accurate data and um, often in large volumes uh, with additional tools that um, can help them interpret that data, they can um, draw the right conclusions and further motivate their advertising decisions. And um, uh, as the table has been the centerpiece of volume and the product grew bigger in features, all the new additions had their button representation added above the report table with data. To give you an example of uh, what this means to our users, let's assume that we have a, a screen that is 640 pixels in height. And um, the table in this example uh, is around 57% of the whole screen. Um, so far, so good. It's not the best, but it is uh, okay for our users. Uh, now let's say we have developed a long awaited, awaited feature called notifications. Uh, we wanted our users to be able to add notifications from the report table. So a notify me button uh, was added above the table along with other buttons. And this is what happened. And it's actually a real life example. The button didn't fit in one line anymore. So the whole line broke, creating a lot of white space for this one additional button. And what that means for our users is actually that um, the report table is now 330 pixels in height which is around 51, well, 50% 50 of the whole screen. So uh, basically each added feature takes space away from the table and with screens smaller than 640 pixels, which are also common for our users, the table also gets smaller. And the buttons grew in numbers and despite the fact that some were much more often used than others, they had the same care he being in the same line above the table. And also due to uh, the design that I mentioned and some past decisions made, uh, some of the buttons were appearing uh, out of nowhere once a campaign was selected, which made the whole screen jump. And uh, I had the opportunity to observe a workflow of uh, some of our users when they visited uh, us at the office. And I noticed how much they were struggling with this while working on their laptops. Um, so those two reasons seem like enough uh, to start working on a redesign. And the product team has been aware that this is an issue for quite some time, but improving it never seemed to be a priority. Um, there were designers before me that tried to do it. Uh, there even was a design prepared to a certain extent, but there was always something more important to get done. And Volume Tracker is a very technically complex product and it requires a lot of maintenance. Um, and also the features that our users are requesting are quite difficult to build. So development resources were always spread rather thin. And uh, there's a, an additional problem um, with a change like this. And it's the fact that it's difficult to measure 
uh, I did observe it, but I didn't have any numbers to support my case at that point. And there was always this argument that kept coming back that uh, our users are not complaining that much. They are still using the product. So maybe it's not bad enough to be worth fixing. At the beginning of 2020, something changed. A girl with uh, primarily product design experience uh, that was working on a different product at my company uh, got the offer to take up a product manager's role in Volume Tracker. And uh, I didn't have much experience working with her at that point. But soon after she joined, uh, I noticed this, this shift in perspective uh, because I know that she has uh, the product business needs in mind. She doesn't always only think about uh, good UX but she's aware of the value it brings to the table. Um, and we have been talking about the changes needed in navigation uh, for a while. And finally, thanks to her help, uh, I got a green light uh, to move forward with the project. And uh, I have used the resources I had of past attempts at redesign, and I dug a little bit deeper into the numbers. I was focused on the redesign itself, on making the navigation simpler and lighter in style. But I also really did not want to hide elements important for our users or slow them down in their everyday work. So uh, I needed precise data on what users were clicking most often uh, and what screen resolution uh, was the most common for them so that the change would be um, the advantages for uh, the most of our users. Mm. And uh, the final redesign involved two main parts. Um, the first was uh, hiding less frequently used buttons under two dropdowns, um, uh, more reports for the report buttons, and more for the uh, buttons above the report table. Uh, in both those cases, we have decided that um, it, they would be sort of responsive. So depending on the screen resolution, uh, some users would see more of them and some less of them. With uh, wider screens, there was the option to see even all of the available buttons so, uh, so that our users could still have the option to have access to all of them uh, if they have bigger screens. Uh, another change was that we have divided um, the buttons above the table into two groups. On the left, we now have uh, buttons connected to managing campaigns, offers, anything that's listed in the table. And on the right, we have buttons that are um, connected to managing the report table itself. Um, and uh, the effect of the improvements was, first of all, uh, much more space for the report table, which uh, for the uh, 640 pixel screen, and now uh, took 67% of it. Uh, so that was uh, really good for our users. And also an additional bonus uh, change, but very important from my perspective, was the fact that the um, screen was no longer jumping when uh, the user was selecting a campaign. Um, a lot of work has been done uh, up until this point, but we still had a long way to go. And we had to test those changes out to make sure we didn't miss anything major before turning it on for all our users. And to, to test it in the first phase, we used our Slack community called Volume Lab. And it consists mostly of our power users, but for the purpose of this um, change, we decided that that was good enough. And uh, our strategy has been to turn it on and then check for reactions. And there were some reactions. Um, I have been prepared for that because I understand how it's always difficult for the brain to adjust to a change like this. Surprising to me was the fact that there wasn't much emotional feedback of people sort of begging to revert the changes and to not change anything in the product. Some bugs were mentioned and some functionalities have been taken away by us by mistake. So we worked to bring those back. And the next step was um, rolling out the changes to 50% of our users. And um, as I mentioned before, the biggest surprise again was the fact that the users really didn't complain that much. Um, there were some technical issues that we have encountered, they have mentioned them. Um, but once we fixed those, um, 
we have rolled the changes to out to 100% uh, of our users. And only a couple of them out of thousands uh, directly complained um, that they didn't like the change. And uh, another uh, thing I've learned through the process um, is the fact how important it is to uh, get people on your side when you um, design a change like this. Uh, I really believe you need to find advocates for better user experience. And this is something that work, worked really well for me. I found exactly two people who understood my goal. One of them was the product manager I've already mentioned who helped me um, to uh, get the green light for the project. And the other person was the front-end developer who understood user needs and uh, cared for them. And they helped me in reality to first make the change a priority and then they supported me through its development. And uh, I also uh, recently uh, read a book that talks extensively on this topic. And um, Leah Bully says, every day is an opportunity to invite your non-UX colleagues into the world of UX and invite them into the conversation and the community and treat them as partners in the ongoing project of making your products as user-friendly as possible. And I think this is uh, very important. I think once people feel that the project is also theirs, they care more and the whole product gets more out of it. Mm. And so uh, to summarize, um, it has been my observation while designing volume that when you have a product with that much history, it's sometimes difficult to make even small changes um, because you worry about the user's reaction, the, the impact this will have on, on their work, the bugs that the change may bring forward. And I know firsthand that it may be tempting to let users have what they got used to. And I feel it's uh, also more important with mature products such as Volume Tracker to include people from different roles with different backgrounds in the creative process and uh, through development and testing. Because for once they have the answers that designers need, the knowledge and expertise, um, but also they are our teammates. And once they feel that the project is partly theirs, they will motivate us and others and advocate for our vision. I think it's also very important to get the data behind your ideas and make sure that the improvements you're planning are not actually going to make life harder for your users. And um, if you have those two elements, uh, my advice is don't be afraid and trust your instincts because your product needs refreshing and it needs changes and the users will learn to live with them even don't take away something that they need most. And I think that's it. Thank you for your time.